either Biden said, I know full well we're going to collapse and that this is going to be a calamity and didn't give two dams, or he wasn't getting good information. And now it's going to go from bad to worse because now we have even fewer boots on the ground and, and less resources over there, which none, none of these makes us feel any better. Well, I hope that you promise me that uh, you invite me back on your next podcast where we have a whole discussion about intelligence, <laughs> because yeah. there's so much to say on that question that you just nailed it. Um, you know, the quality of intelligence, we need to discuss that in America. I mean, look, uh, when I was acting director, I brought the entire team into a room that gave us the information that if we moved the embassy to Jerusalem, there would be World War Three. There there wasn't. Uh, there wasn't even chaos. As a matter of fact, many of our allies in the Middle East liked the move, and, and the move opened up the Abraham Accords. So I uh, bluntly asked them, what went wrong? What are you going to do to fix this problem? Because the information you gave the President of the United States and all of his advisors, there would be chaos and a war. That intelligence failure uh, didn't result in pictures on TV in a chaotic situation, but it is a major intelligence failure which impacts policies, and we need to fix these issues. Look, I could go on and on about um, the the Russia team, for instance. The Russia team uh, in the United States intelligence agencies uh, is highly political. Mm and extremely, I don't think that they do the American people a service because uh, they, their prioritization of intelligence is completely upended by those on the team that will leak personal, private, raw, untested intelligence for political gain. They're there extremely you go. So political. let me ask you that. So let's, let's go there just for a minute. Um, why are all the intelligence failures seemingly woke, right? You know, like it's, I'm sense, sensing a pattern here, right? Like you can't possibly move the embassy to Jerusalem. Oh no, it would result in massive uprest, uh, unrest in, in the Middle East. Well, it didn't. Uh, well, you can definitely withdraw all the troops in just in time for your 9-11 photo op, President Biden, and don't worry about a thing. Oh, whoops, that was totally wrong. We, we got it wrong again. Russia is a thing and here's the dossier and all, right? So why are all the intelligence failures seemingly ideological. At this point, I would be remiss if I didn't defend the intelligence agencies, because the reality is uh, intelligence is an assessment, and we give our best assessment to policymakers at the time. And so it is up to probe and understand, you know, is this a tested uh, long-term assessment? Is this a new assessment? Uh, was this assessment done by, um, you know, just one aspect of intelligence? It gets very complicated, but uh, I, I tell people all the time, uh, intelligence is an assessment, and we need to remember that it's not always a perfect science. And so uh, when we do have information like uh, moving the embassy would be a disaster, um, there, there, I can tell you from my personal experience, there wasn't any other voices saying, but maybe you could do it in a safe way. Um, maybe you could do it, but in a way that would not cause chaos. Many times, though, we do have assessments that hedge, that say, well, the Taliban may be, uh, you know, ready to, to come back. It could be quick or it could take a while. Now, those assessments generally are not very helpful and you want to dig in. But uh, at the end of the day, we need to hold our intelligence community to a higher standard. And this is where I can get very critical of Avril Haines, because I think she came in saying that she was going to be very transparent about the process. And as you just pointed out, Megan, we have a huge dilemma. Did the intelligence community tell Joe Biden that the Taliban would take over fast? Or did they fail to tell him that he, Joe Biden, has blamed the intelligence community? Avril Haines needs to come forward and explain. Did her team fail? Or is Joe Biden the director of political? national intelligence? 
Yes. Yeah. Can I can I ask you a question? Because one of these one of the questions I've had in watching all the coverage of this is it, obviously I I believe that Americans of both parties are upset with the way this was handled and the images are upsetting and searing. However, I also wonder is this in fact what we're really upset about? Or is it the feeling that we've lost the war, that the war didn't end the way we'd hoped, you know, that that so much blood and treasure was sacrificed and there will be no spike the ball in the end zone moment? I think it's both. I think Americans obviously are accustomed to winning and we do have the greatest military in the history of the world. Uh, We are always capable of winning. And when we mess up at the end, uh, then I think Americans are right to hold us to account. Um, uh, look, I, the thing is, we got to make a twist or somebody didn't do something right. And so who is responsible? Yes, we know that Joe Biden is responsible, but he's not going to resign. But, but we need to see changes. Uh, you know, is it the National Security Advisor? Is it the Secretary of Defense? Or is it the Joint Chiefs of Staff? But let me tell you, Somebody needs to be held to account and be fired, and we need a new strategy. We're not just firing people just for headlines. We're firing people because the strategy that they put forward didn't work, and we want to make sure that they never are in a position to think through that strategy. It's high stakes. And you know, this is the type of thing that Donald Trump the next day would have fired somebody over. But in Washington, that's not what happens. It's a blame game and it's a rush from the media, which we could do a whole nother segment on the failures of the media when it comes to uh, rushing us into war and then not holding people accountable on the military side. 